Well, hi y'all, welcome back to Grow Fit with Tammy. Today, I'm going to help you solve some water kefir problems or mistakes that you're making. But first, I'm Tammy Hackman and this is Grow Fit with Tammy. If you haven't already subscribed and rang that bell, do so so that we can journey together. Now you've probably seen my video, How to Make Water Kefir. If you haven't, click on the link here or look down in the description below. It's where I'll tell you what water kefir is, how you can make it yourself, and the benefits of doing so for you and your family. The first problem I want to address is one that I encountered upon my return home. I've just had some extended travel and quarantine due to COVID, and I returned to find my grains all shriveled up. Usually they're nice and fluffy, and they look a bit like Rice Krispies, like puffed rice, and a little bit more round than that though. Currently, I have what looks like quinoa before it's cooked, or couscous. They're so tiny, minuscule, they've just starved themselves. This is a jar I keep in my fridge with my backup grains. They've eaten through the sugar water that I store them in. It had been about six weeks. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, you don't have to throw it away. Try to revive them. I've already been able to do so, so more than likely, you can too. Not only travel, but sometimes you get out of the habit of making your water kefir. Now to solve this problem, all I had to do was strain out my grains and refresh the sugar water, and I began making my kefir again. My grains are already starting to fluff up again. If you don't think that's your problem, it could be that your grains are requiring more nutrients. I vary the type of sugar I use from time to time just so that they're getting a different source of minerals. I've used beet sugar, sugar cane, coconut sugar. I do spend a little time reading what kinds of sugars are available. I make a selection based on varying the nutrients for my grains. Today, I have a lighter sugar than I normally do. Usually I'm more in the red range because I just want it as raw and unprocessed as possible. But our grocery store here in Hong Kong varies what they charge and a 500 gram bag for eight US dollars, I just couldn't do it this time. Even though I can put it aside just for this precious commodity, I may yet go back to it, depending on how my grains continue to do. So here I have, I believe it's an organic demerara sugar, or it might be a muscovado. It's fairly light, but the lightness doesn't matter. It's more how natural it is, how minimally processed, keeping those nutrients intact to feed your grains. Another way to troubleshoot feeding your grains is to add a drop or two of molasses. I've done this from time to time, it's dark and has a strong flavor, so go sparingly. Just give them a little bit something to bring them back to life. I might have to do that for this batch as well. Now on to the next problem, temperature. Upon coming back to Hong Kong, we are now in the heat of summer and it is hot and humid beyond what I enjoy. Now I knew from my experience of doing this for several years, I was gonna need to shorten the time of my ferment on the counter. So here I have my bottle, my grains and my sugar are in it, and I just started doing taste tests. So after about eight hours, I could see some action in there, and so I gave it a sip. What you're gonna want to do is taste your sugar water to begin with if this is a new process for you, so you have a point of reference to know once the grains have eaten through some of the sugar. And then it's up to you. When you begin, you're gonna like it a little bit sweeter. After you've been doing it a while, you can leave it to ferment longer and bring on that pungent, sour taste that you can, if you choose, disguise with your second ferment. And here I have some strawberries and this bottle's ready to enjoy. It's, it's already eaten through and my strawberries are a pale pink color now. So you can re-sweeten and add more fizz so you have a soda with your second ferment. And again, I'll refer you to my first video, how to make water kefir. So just to recap, in the cooler months, it's gonna take you a lot longer for this ferment to happen, sometimes upwards of 24 hours. And then when it's warm outside or warmer where you have it in your kitchen, it's gonna take less time. So use your taste buds, have a sip or two, and see where you're at and if it's ready for you or not. And finally, I wanna talk about a mistake you might be making. Don't use metal. No metal should come in contact with your grains. Here I have a plastic spoon that I use to scoop my grains into my water kefir. And when I'm taking them out when my kefir's ready, 
my plastic mesh strainer. You can, however, use a stainless steel strainer, but be sure it's stainless steel because I've been told stainless steel is okay for the grains. Just to be safe, I stick with my plastic mesh strainer and no problems there. Well, that's all I had for this episode. I'm available for any other problems or comments you might have in the thread below. I'll be looking for you there and I'm happy to make more videos to address any problems you may be having. Until next time, bye y'all. Happy fermenting. I'm making my selection based on something I thought my brains might enjoy. <laughs>